Um, today we'll be covering topics around contingency. So we'll talk about what this actually is, when you should read this, how to bring up this topic with social services, how to bring it up with the person that you provide care for, and um, what should actually be included in the contingency plan, what help you might need in, in an emergency, um, emergency carer card schemes, and then I'll hand it back over to you for questions and answers. So with contingency plans, as carers, you, you basically need reassurance that when an emergency happens, there is support in place for the people that you provide care for. And if help is needed urgently, um, some people can call on family and friends to help, but uh, we, you know sometimes this isn't always possible because of their own commitments or you know where they live in the country, and you know it might just not be uh, an option for you where you can rely on family or friends. So we do have an online tool which you can look at to create an emergency plan, and it's really helpful. And I've just left the link there for you to use when you can. Another reason why you might want to consider a contingency plan is because you might become suddenly unwell or be injured and you might not be able to carry out your usual caring role um, or you might have a domestic emergency in your home such as a flood which you need to um, attend to and you might not be able to you know, uh, deal with your caring role as you normally would. So you might, if you haven't got this in place, you might be thinking, well, when should I be considering this type of plan? It's important to consider this as soon as possible. It's important to have an emergency plan in place quite immediately so that there's a plan in place so that should something happen, you know, your loved ones are looked after. By acting now and having a plan in place can help during those critical times that might arise. Because when you're faced with critical times, the last thing you want to be thinking about is what's actually happened in that in that critical issue, as well as the person you provide care for. Because when something bad happens, you know your your mind can often be like clustered, and so it's at least having a plan in place, knowing that the person that you provide care for is looked after. That's one less worry for you to have. Contingency plans can also provide peace of mind to you as carers, the families and friends involved in a person's care, because they, the plan will be that they have support in place, and so that should hopefully provide you with um, some peace of mind. So we often do hear from carers that um, sometimes dealing with social services can be quite difficult or or they might feel a bit apprehensive or might not know quite what to say. Um, so you might be wondering, well, how do I bring this up with social services? And so it can be raised during a, a child social care assessment or a review, or it can be raised during an adult social care assessment or review. You don't have to actually wait until these reviews are done because most of these are done annually um, or as and when things change. So you can also just bring it up with the social worker as well um, at any point, should you wish to have something in place. The local authority um, might want to have a separate meeting to discuss contingency. If they do, then ask them to arrange this date so that it's pre-booked and so that you've got the date in the diary. Some local authorities are not really forthcoming when it comes to discussing contingency. So it's important to raise it yourself. So the onus is on you to, to sort it out and ensure that the support is available for the person that you provide care for. Usually it's the social worker who should be the first point of contact, but if there is no social worker allocated, then ask to speak with the duty social worker. There is always work uh, daily with local authorities so you should be able to speak to somebody about a contingency plan. So similarly with social services you might be wondering well how do I bring it up 
you know, with the person that I provide care for. And that can be quite a difficult conversation to have because you're basically preparing for an emergency or you're preparing for crisis moments. And whilst being a carer and, you know, dealing with um, what you do as carers is, is already quite a lot for you, having this conversation might be quite um, daunting for some of you. And that's completely OK. So it might cause you some distress, anxiety and fear. It's um, absolutely OK to have those feel those emotions. Um, some tips on navigating that type of situation and should you find yourself in it is to look after yourself first. Seek advice and comfort before bringing up this topic with the person that you provide care for or with your families or loved ones. If you are finding things difficult in general and you're finding this topic quite difficult, then speak with a trusted friend or a family member. You're obviously all, you know, always welcome to seek advice from us here at Carers UK as well. We'd be happy to um, email you with advice or speak to you on the phone about any concerns that you might have about this type of topic. Um, listen attentively to what others might need or may be able to offer because there's a range of support available. Uh, be honest about your feelings and what you think might be the best options. As carers, you generally know the person that you're providing care for best. And so you will have a better idea about what, what can be done to best support them in emergencies. Start to prepare for what might be required in the contingency plan and seek help and support where it's needed to get that information together. So you might now be thinking, well, what's uh, what's included in a contingency plan? Like what's, you know, what do I need to, what information is needed? And so I've put together this list here, which is, information that you'll already most likely have is the name, address and contact details of the person that you provide care for, who you want contacted in an emergency, so family, friends and professionals, so you know doctors, consultants, solicitors, um, any professional that's involved directly with the person's care. Details of medication and where it's stored, as well as any times that they need to have medication details of any ongoing treatment that they need. When it also comes to medication, it's also important to make a note of um, prescriptions as well, um, because if you're not providing care for a long period of time, it, you know, it might be that you need to just put a note on prescriptions and when more medication is required um, in terms of you know, tablets and, and things like that, and when it should be requested from the GP or pharmacy. Details of any allergies and any supplements, medication taken to support this. The details of the GP, pharmacy and hospitals. Details of any care and support they receive, such as from the local authority or NHS trust. And when you say, when you list out this detail about the care, and note down like the um, care package that they get and whether they get carers from a care agency or whether it's um, any private carers as well, as well as their details too. Any continence products needed and who supplies them. Any mobility challenges and mobility aids such as wheelchair or hoist, as well as their contact details, especially if the wheelchair is serviced. Any behavioural um, issues that others need to be aware of details of which foods and drinks that they like and which they possibly don't like, details of what they actually like to do, like activities and, you know, what they like to watch and what they like to sort of have in the background or, you know, where they like to go, that sort of thing. Any reasonable adjustments they need. So when I say that, I mean, you know, in terms of communication, is there any reasonable adjustments they require? Or is there any sort of help they need to manage their day-to-day -day better with other services? So we'll talk a little bit now about getting help in an emergency. So in cases of an emergency with where there's immediate risk, just call 999, um, while that situation might be quite distressing, 
it's important to try your level best to just remain calm, focus on your own breathing and get the appropriate support in place as soon as possible. Where you might require support out of hours, there are many organisations that can help with that. Um, so you can call NHS 111. This type of team are really helpful and they can advise what can be done and can also send help if required. One downside to this, as we all know, is that you might need to wait a few hours, but they will do a, you know, a typical assessment on the phone to see if immediate support is needed. Samaritans are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can contact them on those details there. Social services also have an out of hours number that is reachable. So if you need support after 5.30 or five o'clock, whenever they close, you can call their out of hours team. They're sometimes in some councils, they refer to them as emergency duty teams. So there is something called a carer card scheme. So you probably can't see it because this is in the way. But um, some areas in which you live in have emergency carer card schemes, which have been set up for carers. So this might be called, uh, they, they often refer to different things, such as a carer card scheme, carer's emergency card, and emergency care scheme. So you can check with your local authorities or your local carers organisations to see if a scheme like this operates in your area. And so you can find out who your local authority is by using that link here. All you need to do is uh, type in your postcode and, and the council should come up. And your local carers organisation, you can just use this link here, which is our online directory. So with some of these schemes, what will happen is a worker will be allocated to you and they'll formulate the plan with you. And you basically keep this card with you at all times, you know, keep it in your wallet, your purse, your bag. And in the event of an emergency, you, you call this scheme and arrangements will be made to support the person that you provide care for. The plan will already be done because you've done it with them and all you're doing is calling them to put this plan in place together. So some people do live with conditions that affect their sense of direction or orientation. And so that means that they might, you know, they could get lost or go missing. There is a charity called Medic Alert and they have a scheme that provides help and support. And this can invite, this basically involves providing a secure medical record, which is digital for the person that you provide care for. And that's linked to an item of their identity that they really wear, such as a bracelet, a necklace, a ring. Um, and so there is a fee for this membership, but they I do understand that they do offer a goodwill fund for anyone who can't afford to pay the fee. And so something like this can also be included in a contingency plan. You know, if you're thinking about all aspects of the person that you provide care for, it's important to say whether um, their condition means that they have no awareness of danger or they have a, they have um, it affects their sense of direction or orientation. And so if you do have this, um, if you are thinking about getting this type of support with Medic Alert, then that will be another professional service that you add in your contingency plan as well. So my main top tips from this presentation is to carry an emergency carer card with you at all times. Inform your GP that you are a carer you can register as a carer with your GP surgery. What they usually do is they, they either have a form that you need to fill in or you can do it over the phone or in person. And they basically just have you on their system as a carer. And it is useful to do that because um, some surgeries can offer you some benefits, such as hopefully better appointment times. I know that that's a real issue at the moment, but you can speak to your GP surgery and see what it is that they can support you with as being a carer. Keep your plan updated as and when things change. So that might be your own health, the person that you provide care for, their health, or any other major changes um, that happen you know, during that time. So I said this earlier in the presentation as well, it's really important to prioritize your own health and your own well-being too. 
And um, you can also request a care assessment for a local authority social care team. A carer's assessment is basically an assessment for you as a carer. It looks at what support you might need in your role as a carer and your own responsibilities, um, your own health and well-being, what outcomes you're looking to achieve as a carer. So it's, it is useful to have assessments such as this because it, you can get support in your roles. Reach out to local carer groups and organisations for support. So um, earlier in the presentation, I had the link for local carer groups and you can get in touch with them to see um, you know, what type of support they can offer. And also you can speak to them about contingency plans and see whether they have any further support that they can provide you with that.